Greetings, my fellow space cartographers, and welcome back to another episode of my Warhammer 40k Imperial Planets miniseries. Today, after the crowded hive and shrine worlds we covered previously, I wanted to talk to you about two types of worlds where things are a bit more relaxed and peaceful. And these are the Pleasure Worlds, also called Garden Worlds, and the Agri Worlds, without which a lot of Imperial planets would literally starve. I would like to also apologize a bit in advance if I have to use a few non-Warhammer images or artworks, as the visual sources for these worlds are a bit scarce. That being said, I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about these world types, shall we? A pleasure world, also known as a paradise world or garden world, is the playground of the imperial nobility and other higher ups. They tend to be of outstanding natural beauty, and the population of such worlds are dedicated to pampering the important imperial visitors that they often receive such as members of major noble houses, members of the novice nobility, planetary governors, important ecclesiarchs, imperial commanders, rogue traders, and wealthy Chartist captains. Chartist captains, in case you didn't know, are wealthy owners of merchant vessels or fleets of merchant vessels. Pleasure worlds are often very cultured places and many have huge proportions of their populace dedicated solely to producing works of art, music, or other forms of entertainment. Casino complexes, opulent restaurants, and huge ballrooms are always found on such worlds. There is a darker side to pleasure worlds, though, as they can easily be or become hubs for the cults of Slanesh, the Prince of Pleasure. Some pleasure worlds contain large developing cities and other major settlements. All pleasure worlds are considered a subset of the class of planet known as civilized worlds. Garden worlds hold a unique position within the Imperium, in that they are of the few kinds of planets with minimal technological advancement. The Imperial tithes from these planets are often lower than usual or simply non-existent as many of them are lightly populated and have no available resources to extract. Instead, Garden Worlds offer the Imperium a multitude of idyllic settings, ranging from recuperative locales to private estates, in exchange for protection and, of course, money. They are tranquil environments, though worrisome considerations still dangle like loose threads on a beautiful tapestry. Some are rumored to have been ancient terraforming experiments from the Dark Age of Technology and could be environmentally unstable. Others are believed rediscovered after abating warp storms, and so could disappear again without warning. Still others are thought to be the last homes of alien species, and woe to any living human living there should the Xenos return. The vast majority of garden worlds are named for their unparalleled beauty and largely undeveloped surface. Though they have all the amenities the Imperium has to offer, they do not sacrifice the peaceful surroundings to accommodate more people. Many of these worlds are places of refuge and respite, while others are monasteries or training facilities. Regardless of their use, the basics of living engender the development of a mindset or lifestyle that supports what the world delivers. Healers develop new methods to aid the afflicted. Scholars and priests research or meditate on their texts and relics. Even some of the martial orders have recognized the need for contemplation and reflection to better own their combat skills. Each of these outlooks, as well as many others, develops into a microculture that essentially becomes the commodity of the planet. Compared to the majority of other planets of the Imperium, garden worlds move at a different pace. While not necessarily slower in speed, the sense of urgency, or in some cases panic, found elsewhere, seldomly exists here. On most of these worlds, value is placed on being thorough and contemplative in all actions, 
weighing all the possibilities and seeking the best from those available. Most natives have a relaxed flow to their lives, usually due to methodical planning and preparation. Since there is often very little internal or external conflict on these worlds, major changes in their schedules or plans rarely occur. Though most of these planets are firmly part of the Imperium of Man, others are privately owned or cater to other clienteles. These worlds are often on the fringes of lawful sector authority, and can exist outside the blessings of Terra. Those living here might hold much more relaxed views concerning imperial law, and lifetimes of dealing with the rich and powerful can own their social skills to supernatural levels. Though the mindset of the community determines much of their behavior, many Garden World natives exude an almost eerie and unearthly sense of calm. They are for the most part methodical, but approach problem-solving in a more empiric way, utilizing both hard analysis and intuition to complete their objectives. These folk sometimes constitute some of the Imperium's finest envoys and orators, having an innate ability to put people at ease and connect with others. Garden Worlders are open people and expressive, but are equally skilled at keeping their emotions under control to achieve necessary goals. They do not relish this, however, and most make a point of finding a way soon after to process the emotional content before it finds new and unhealthy ways to manifest. With these skill sets, Garden Worlders make for exceptional military analysts, healers and diplomats throughout the Imperium. The Adeptus Administratum frequently recruits from these worlds, and though the Imperial tithes for psychers are normally low on Garden Worlds, the quality of the recruits from these planets ensures that very few of them escape the notice of the Scholastica Psychiana. The Adeptus Ministorum has also found exceptionally talented scholars and priests on these planets, and often maintains permanent bases there to find new clergy. Rogue traders often take the finest to become part of their crew, where their skills in calm discussion can aid in commercial negotiation. Agri-Worlds an agri-world is a planet of the Imperium entirely dedicated to the production of agricultural products. Many planets of the Imperium, such as Forge Worlds or Hive Worlds, are completely incapable of sustaining the sheer number of people who live and work there. To feed these people, as well as the vast armies of the Imperial Guard, many planets have been completely transformed into giant farms. Most of these planets have populations of less than 100 million, and possess only a few cities. These farming planets, in their own way, are as vital to the Imperium as its hive cities. These planets are given over entirely to the production of food, which hive worlds cannot produce in sufficient quantities to keep their huge population from starving. Many of these worlds have whole continents given over to livestock or fields of crops. Some agri-worlds are covered with oceans, teeming with fish, and a few are far stranger. Worlds covered in edible fungus, scoured by swarms of nutritional insects, or are gas giants whose upper atmospheric layers are home to flocks of edible or egg-producing flying creatures. A few planets are used solely to provide clean, potable water to nearby hive worlds. Angry worlds are sometimes ruled directly by the Adeptus Administratum rather than a local government, to help ensure that their produce is grown and harvested at maximum efficiency. Those who toil on angry worlds provide the Imperium's countless billions of subjects with one of their essential resources – food. The Adeptus Administratum classifies planets to this task based on desirable climates, native livestock, or other natural factors. On other agri-worlds, artificial aspects dominate, such as sheltered hydroponic lakes, floating fields suspended in hollowed-out planetoids, or algae vats buried deep within irradiated mountains. In all cases, their populations are devoted to a single cause – feeding the Imperium. 
even the slightest crop failure or livestock plague can doom other worlds to horrific starvation or collapse an imperial front, thus making their often overlooked efforts vital for humanity's survival. Though agri-worlds are each devoted to growing and gathering foodstuffs for a ravening imperium, each one is unique in the ways it goes about this, as well as the actual items it produces or exports. Many rely on staples though, as these are relatively simple to grow, store, manipulate, and process into a variety of forms for human consumption. Some concentrate on rarer items and delicacies that can only be produced on that planet, foods bound for the tables of the connected and mighty. In time, most become renowned for certain exports, as Calto is for Padonas rice, or Cell is for its Moxon. Few agriworlders, however, share in the bounties from their cultivated fields or packed corals, and often subsist on discarded grains or meats unsuitable for processing. Agrarian workforces can be anchored to working a single field, often developing such devotion to their produce that new religious cults can spring up like the plants themselves. Others might continuously travel the surface, following local growing seasons to descend like attacking armies on fields ripe for harvest, and scouring the landscape to remove every morsel of grain, stalk, or other edible life. More voracious than any swarm, they leave behind nothing but barren soil before marching off to eradicate another territory. On some planets, especially where there is a strong Adeptus Mechanicus presence, laborers with bionic scythe limbs might work alongside monotask harvest servitors, while combat servitors patrol the fields and use their heavy stubbers to discourage marauding creatures. Produce fields vary in size and shape, including precisely designed acreages based on ancient decrees, patterns to venerate revered imperial saints, or wild forms based on the seasonal whims of their ruler. Some fields are not on the land at all, such as plankton farms that reap the oceans or underground fungi caverns. Other agri-worlds instead specialize in livestock creatures, from the ubiquitous groks to unique native creatures that cannot thrive anywhere else. Like the flora, these don't have to be terrestrial, and could include gargantuan sea beasts larger than a starship, or sky-blackening clouds of protein-rich insects. In some cases, these planets might import base fodder, or cultivate hydroponic algae and vat-grown lash, just to feed the fauna until the beasts are harvested. Working on any agri-world, no matter the produce, is harsh and remorseless. There's always fields to till, crops to tend, harvests to conduct, or beasts to oversee. Even in artificial pastures, algae vats must be seeded and skimmed of their precious yields in continual cycles. This subservience to natural processes breeds strong individuals who readily apply their muscles to any problem, aka rednecks. It is somewhat rare for them to leave their home world, but those who do can find many new uses across the Imperium. Agri-worlds often supply the bulk of their Imperial tithes in edible produce rather than manpower, given their relatively low populations and the importance of their export. Still, the Imperial Guard is known to draw in from agri-worlds, especially in times of invasion for nearby planets. Some agri-worlders might develop an affinity for machinery, after much experience working with autoscythes or harvest crawlers, and could be noticed for recruitment into the Mechanicus. The Ecclesiarchy calls to others, from their years spent intoning prayers to the God Emperor for successful harvests. The endless tabulations of harvest output, seed usage, or other essential use of numbers can indicate a talent perfectly suited for the Adeptus Administratum, and a vital posting anywhere in the Imperium. The curse of mutation is also present, unfortunately, though less often confronted and eradicated. Agri-worlds with lower population density 
allow the afflicted to more easily hide deformities or elude watchful eyes. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about pleasure worlds and agri-worlds for today. As you can see, if you want to work on either of those two, you can pretty much just pick between being a farmer, a bellboy, or a sex worker. Which of these two worlds did you find most interesting? Let me know in the comments below, along any questions or thoughts you may have. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to click the like button, and maybe subscribe for future videos. And if you'd like to support my channel, there is a link to my Patreon page in the video description, where any contribution is very welcome. I thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. The Emperor Protects.